Today, we are talking with Ashley Fox of Ashley Fox Designs, who was actually our very first Every STEM member. And we are so happy to have her here because she is going to talk us through a little bit about how her business worked before Every STEM, what's changed with Every STEM in her process, and what's different now. So, welcome, Ashley. Thank you. I didn't know that. Yes, yes. Uh, You're our first paying, wow. first paying every STEM member. Yep. We had some testers, obviously, but you're you were the first to, to join because I think it was Amy McGee of Botanical Brouhaha who got us together. And um, I remember you saying, I need to try this. Yeah, for years I was searching for something that didn't cost a whole lot right out of pocket to learn, you know, straight away how to be more profitable. And this seemed like a win-win the price point that you set for every stem just really, really spoke to me. And so mm -hmm. I felt like there was somewhat of a low risk with your price point. Like the rewards have been incredible. This was my 2021 was my most profitable year of our 14 years in business. And That's that was amazing. Every STEM. yeah, full, full stop 100%. It was, it was due to that. And That's I mean, so I can, it, it was just incredible when we were going through the books during tax time and seeing the profitable events. Uh, mm -hmm. It it was just, it was so rewarding. It was, it just was a wonderful feeling. And that makes me so happy. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah. You work so hard, you know, as floral designers, we work so hard to mm -hmm. create these beautiful events and we want the client to be happy. We want our design to be what we want it to be, but we also need to be profitable because it's a business. And we did talk a little bit before we started recording and, you know, knowing that if you build every event to be profitable on the front end and you plan it that way, then when you go in and look at tax time, you don't have to be afraid or worried because you know that you've really planned it out to be that way. So were you kind of surprised by it being more profitable or did you kind of have a good feeling going into it? Well, I, I had somewhat of a good feeling going into it. I know some of my events uh, for some of the larger installations, even mm -hmm. though the product and price point of the product we were bringing in was straight on the money, um, I know that I could see other aspects of my business where we were falling behind. Mm -hmm. And so that was a real clue into some of those aspects. One being sometimes I should have had maybe one less or one more person on that installation, depending on the, the, the labor cost. Um, right. And every stem shows exactly what I would have needed. So it, it, it's really a telling system and you have to put the work in is what I found. So before, when I started my business, I wanted, I, I just did it like a lot of us do in the early stages where I enjoyed flowers. I wanted to dive deeper into seeing if I could sell them to people for weddings because I enjoyed them so much. Um, but enjoyment only takes you so far in your business. You have to be profitable in order to last and be around for decades. And if that's what you want to do, then you have to start looking at your time commitment for everything that you do. So that's design time, certainly on the wedding week, but there's a whole lot of other things that go into that. So one of those things is I dedicate Wednesdays to work on color palettes, design decks, kind of the somewhat fun aspects, right? Of the planning process, really fun aspects. And then yes. I create Mondays to do answering admin and email and working on the accounting aspect. And Tuesdays, I work on the flower order aspect. So it really is a dedication of time. Every stem mm -hmm. is not going to do the work for you, but it saves money once you get your templates down and once you enter in your flowers. And I've really found, I did an order in a half an hour the other day. And That's that awesome. order- yeah. And, and it was, you know, a, a $20,000 job and okay. I counted all the stems in 30 minutes and sent and it. How long do you think that would have taken you 
maybe before without every stem, how like just an estimate of time compared to what you're doing now with half an hour? An embarrassingly amount of time. And then, you know, three, four hours. And then let's say the client calls you at the end of the day and says, oh yeah, but we need two more table center. We've, we've readjusted the tables and we've added two rounds and four conference or whatever it might be. So mm-hmm. that would take me a, a whole other amount of time to do that longhand. Mm-hmm. And on every stem, I can go in and just move two numbers. Mm-hmm. I can move the round table number and I can move and change the conference table numbers. And it instantly tells me within a minute and I can have the printout in a minute, the new order that they told me. Um, and, and that's just a remarkable thing for me who's done it longhand for so many years and it's not a good system. Right. There's just way too many errors and it takes too long. I hate it. <laughs> I, hated, <laughs> I hated doing it, which is probably why it was profitable enough but it wasn't, you know, we couldn't see our extra stems that we had available. And sometimes you want those extra stems available because you know things are going to die or break in the July heat or whatever it might be. Exactly. So you're like, okay, a hundred extra mums. Okay, that's probably a good idea to have those. I'll keep those. Mm-hmm. But the extra stems that I see on my order, I can say, okay, I can trim that away from the arbor or what have you. Yeah, I think having that fine line between having enough extra to feel confident that when you need to, you can deliver for the client because we don't wanna be short things, but also not having so much extra that you end up basically wasting all those flowers and not only wasting the flowers, but wasting the time you're paying people to process the flowers you're delivering, probably taking those flowers to the setup and then returning with them. And it's just a lot of extra work, not only on the ordering side, but also on the production side of having all these flowers that you're not using, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. We did an event in January and we had three buckets of extra flowers and they were the small Trader Joe's buckets. Mm -hmm. And that made me really glad because it was a large event. There were lots of installations and centerpieces. And uh, we came in right where we needed to be. So, and I I think for a January event, sometimes you're wondering, are those flowers going to be frozen in their box by the time they get there? So Mm -hmm. I was okay with a few extra bunches happening that week. Right. And Mm -hmm. so tell me a little bit about what process you used to go from how you were ordering before to how you're ordering now with every stem and a little bit about how it fits in. Maybe we could do that one first and then secondarily how it kind of fits into your workflow with meeting with a client and going through that from the day you kind of book a wedding or an event all the way through to when you're actually delivering it. Right, so when we propose a wedding and we wanna know is this wedding one going to be profitable for us um, given, either the installations that we're doing or the centerpieces. And our business has a minimum. We we have a minimum for weddings. Um, So we right off the bat know sort of what a a template, if you will, of what Mm -hmm. our minimum amount can be spent on an arbor and a centerpiece and bouquets and things like that. Mm -hmm. But where it really comes in handy is when we do new spaces. So let's say there's a new venue or a new sort of installation that we're doing or a new setup. And what I like to do is plug in those things to every stem and say, how much money can we spend on that installation for the client? Because they want that piece to be the most important. So right mm-hmm. away, we can see where all the numbers are falling falling out. And um, that way, I can also enter in all of the names of the flowers that I want to use. Mm -hmm. So what I love to do is save all my flower farmers lists from every year and every season. So in July from a local farmer, I can look at what she was growing last year, enter that in, 
And I can make a rough estimate guess as to what I know that she's going to be growing that this year too. They, most farmers grow a lot of the same things year after year. And so in that way, I can plug into my library that flower name and the price point and get a rough estimate in January for my clients upcoming in the, the next season. Now, obviously this year has been wild. So even within just a week or two or a month, you can have flower prices going up and up and up. So mm -hmm. with every stem, that's made it really, really easy to go in there, readjust that number and say, oh my goodness, that is really, that flower, do I need it that badly? Because that's going to, those Juliet roses are really going to put me over this week. How many can I really, how many do I really need? Because mm -hmm. now they're five dollars, they're six dollars, or seven dollars a stem. Right. Uh, I hope I'm answering your question. I yeah, this is definitely. how I this is how I kind of process it through to yeah. make sure that we're staying on budget for that particular wedding. Uh, again, I think it's really, really important to note. And I know I said I wasn't going to say this, but I know nobody likes to hear it. But you have to put the work in if you want to be profitable. And every right. stem makes that process super efficient. So I love the fact that in every stem, you get a printout PDF from every of every flower stem that you need and from what group of vendor it's from. So if I'm getting it from Kohler and Drum and I'm getting it from a flower farmer, it's going to tell me who to send that to. So I'll just send my sales rep that PDF and go, here you go. And like I said, for that $20,000 event that I just put an order in for, I, that 30 minutes, I timed myself. And that 30 mm -hmm. minutes includes sending the email That's of great. my PDF to my reps. And, and do your were, reps like the format? Do they seem to be able to kind of, you know, when you send it to them, they, they get it? Yes, because here is the reality of that is that when you see your reps, um, I believe some of, at least one of them, I know I've seen people walking around with printouts, pulling things from the wholesaler mm -hmm. uh, stock. So I think that they like that click and go. I don't know if that works for everybody, but I know I mm -hmm. see reps walking around with their stack of orders. And mm -hmm. I know that they've, they print mine out because sometimes That's it's great. attached to my invoice. Yep. So that's really nice too. They just stick it right in there and that's really great. That's great. Um, it gives them a very yeah. clear idea of, you know, what you're looking for, what you need and, mm -hmm. you know, and then if they have to substitute something, they can communicate with you. This is exactly. just didn't end up being available and, and then you can easily change it out for something else. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. It's really been, I love those printouts. I love them because then we... I can print them out as well. And then I can mark them against when the flowers start to come in too. Mm -hmm. And it shows us what exactly we have and if there are any holes. And do you count in your flowers? Do you kind of do a count as you're receiving them? Do you double check those numbers? You do, mm -hmm. yeah. I've, yeah. I've worked for some florists who really don't do that. And I feel like that's a really important step. And with every stem, I think it does make it a little easier because you have it by vendor and you can process as you yep. process them, you can count them in. Yeah. I mean, let's think about it. If you get in a glassware order or a uh, ceramic compotes, do you not count them all when you get them? I do. Every time. I open, I open every single box and I'm like, I need to make sure they're not broken. I need yes. to make sure they're all here. So that is a step. And a lot of people will say, um, why don't you have assistance processing for you? And I probably could, um, but I like to count things and see what's coming in and if things are frozen or moldy or whatever it is, you know. Yeah, and that way you can decide if you need to adjust. Yeah, and, and or missing altogether. And yeah. inevitably there's always something a little that needs attention. Inevitably there's always a little something that you're missing. And sometimes... Yeah you need to see the product in order to say those flowers aren't going to be big enough to hide my mechanics. What more do I need? And hopefully you've built in a little bit of a cushion too, for your budget 
in order to do that, which is one thing on larger events that I've always built into now mm -hmm. is that extra cushion of stems. So, and do you do one, kind of like a separate column in every stem time, where you order the extras or? Yeah, I call one time I called it my cushion. And after one time I changed that because my <laughs> rep thought it was a cushion mom. Oh, okay. <laughs> and so I was like, oh, I should have thought of that. And um, I didn't, but I, so I don't call it cushion. I just call it extras now. Yeah. And everybody but having that control over knowing how many you need yeah. and making sure that you have enough, especially because when you're doing larger events, um, you know, yeah. this last weekend I freelanced on an event that was, you know, in the $50,000 range. And so, you know, you, you need to have enough flowers to make sure that you're covering for, you know, yeah. breakage and, you know, transportation and all the things that weather, you know, all the, all the issues that, that can come along. So yeah, that's definitely important for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And so how do you feel now using every stem kind of closer to when you're finalizing your order and placing your order? Do you feel like it's, um, you know, helps you with substitutions, makes it easier to just make adjustments if you, you know, because the flowers, the, the supply and shortage has been, you know, really affecting all of us. Right, right. Um, as far as substitutions go, I've had to do only, I've been very lucky, knock on wood. <laughs> yeah. Knock on wood. Um, but I will say that with every stem, I can just go in again and just get rid of the you know, whatever might be, I'll just say Juliet Rose. Okay. There's none available for whatever reason. So I'll come in and, and say, you know, a cream de menthe or whatever. That's not the right rose name. That's a green one. Anyway, another, another peachy colored rose. That's what I'm going to go after. And every stem just makes it really, really easy to just go in there and click that into all of my bouquets and centerpieces and installation without taking up a whole lot of my time and mm -hmm. trying to figure out is, is this going to work for my budget? Because I can put it right in there and it knows right away. Right. So, so for substitution wise, and then again, I can do my printout and it says the name of the rose on the printout. I just love using those because I'm kind of a hard copy kind of a gal on mm -hmm. the week of I don't want to be looking at a screen the week of, I just want to open my folder and look at the recipe, which every stem does as well. Mm -hmm. And, and it, it just, it's a great workflow. The week of the wedding, I print out everything and that's what we go from. That's what we look at. We use it to check off during processing, checking things off during the centerpiece making too. So, um, what, what was your question? <laughs> the substitutions. The substitutions. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Substitutions is really, uh, I had a client just yesterday, they left the studio and the mom turns to me and she goes, so is this a really, this is, this must be a stressful job for you, but you don't seem stressed. And mm. I said, oh, that's really good. I'm glad to hear <laughs> you know, that we don't, we have a good, we have a good poker face. Right. right. Um, but also I told her, I said, we do the work on the front end. And for me, that's using every stem, a good design deck. And then you just have to roll with it. Like part of this job is just rolling with what we need to sub out and not getting because our own, our own expectations are the thing that usually lets us down in the event. The client never knows any of that. Right. And rightfully so, they shouldn't. Um, so just trying to emotionally untie yourself from that fertile area, which is hard, mm -hmm. you know, Definitely. which is really, really hard. But, yes. um, but it just, but after you, you know, have that profitability, Outlook at the end, boy, that sure makes it sweeter. Definitely. You're like, okay, I can, I can live with that. I'll use Fritillaria next year. Right. It'll be there next year. That's right. Yeah, exactly. And like you said, the client really doesn't know. And the, I think a lot of the goal 
for us should be to make sure the client doesn't know. You know, it's really um, that behind the scenes, there's a fine line between kind of sharing enough information with the client to make them feel comfortable and confident in you, but then yeah. also keeping the things like, you know, letting them pick a color palette and working with them on the overall style, but not really letting them control all those little details. So that way, if you do need to make changes, you have that's the control right. to do that. Yeah, that's right. Um, trust is a huge piece of this client relationship and that's exactly right. They give us a color palette. We take their first choice and second choice and then they just need to let us do our thing. Right, And exactly. And this year, all the more. So- That's right, that's right. And, it, and it's, yeah, I, and I think uh, a lot of us can agree that it works out for the best too, when mm -hmm. we're not trying to use something that doesn't look great. And we've all been there. <laughs> right. Definitely. Yes, I know. And so tell me a little bit, I know you said you've had your most profitable year yet, mm -hmm. um, which is amazing. Congratulations on that. That's so awesome. Thank you. Um, how do you feel as far as results? Do you feel like you want to share anything like tangible that has changed or what, um, what you feel like um, you'd want to share with other designers who are thinking about joining or who are just getting into mm -hmm. starting to get into the system? Yeah, for, well, the one part, I think tangibly, when the designers come to put centerpieces together during a Wednesday or Thursday, there's a lot less question and answer because I'm going, when you're a manager of a, a wedding, any wedding, there's a lot of decisions to be made. And one thing that you don't want to have to think about on a creative time, like a wedding week is counting numbers. I mean, it's the last thing that you wanna do. You just want to have somebody tell you. And then finally, that small part of the job that we love, the designing part, let's try to enjoy that. So every STEM allows you to enjoy that part without sweating about, okay, you're looking at all of these carnations and you're like, okay, how many carnations do I need in that centerpiece? Well, that printout is going to tell you exactly you need five. So it, it really just, you pull it, you set it down and you're able to enjoy the design work. So if you got into floral design to enjoy designing, then it's a no brainer to me to have every stem because it allows for that creative aspect to flourish. That's awesome. I'm so happy to hear that. I think a lot of designers feel like recipes and kind of planning ahead can stifle some of their creativity, but I feel the same as you do. I think that planning ahead and designing and learning from the experience. So if you're creating a design and you've, you, you know, you've been doing this for, for years and years, so you know kind of what you think is going to fill out the arrangement that's in your head or that the client is kind of requesting. And mm -hmm. so um, I know some people kind of feel like recipes can be challenging, but I think that having that general layout of what you need mm -hmm. and then being able to, like you said, have a few extras or fill in here or there um, as you go using a system is going to make it a lot more enjoyable in the long run once people get the hang of it. Yeah. Yeah. That's one thing I definitely have found over the years is that if you have a solid base of a system down, the creative aspect can really, really start to come through because you're not sweating and stressing because stress definitely dampens the creative process. Mm -hmm. And I know that for a smaller wedding, you know, maybe a very, very a much smaller order, like a $1,300 ceremony order or a, a small wedding, a $2,000 wedding. A person who's been doing this for a long time, they probably could just go to the wholesaler and they could probably pull that wedding without um, right. doing a stem count. If right. you're familiar with the size of centerpieces, but once you start getting upward into the larger events, it's nearly impossible. You yeah. won't be able to um, think about that. And who wants to wake up 
at 2 a.m. in the middle of the night stressing because you're not sure you have you have enough mums for your arbor the next day. I know I've been there and it's no fun. And you wake up and you're tired and you're just like a zombie on the on the wedding day. I'm not going to say whose wedding that was. <laughs> But it's just, uh, we want to enjoy our job so much. So why not give yourself the gift of being able to enjoy it? Simple as that. Yeah, Yeah. that's so well said. Yeah, it's true. I think, you know, for all the weddings I've done over the last 15 years, you know, I've worked with designers as a freelancer who have very little uh, planning ahead. And, you know, as a freelancer, I think it can be very difficult to come in and try to be an efficient part of a team when you're not given that instruction or that clear, you know, information up front. So I feel like as people are growing their businesses, I know you use freelancers in your business that um, having those recipes seems to be a very helpful thing. Um, And I've done both sides. I've been the business owner and I've been a freelancer. And so I think um, having that experience um, from both ends really has has shown me that it's an important piece for um, just sharing that information with a freelancer. They get that like look of relief, like, oh, great. I have a plan, you know? (laughs) Yes. Yeah. I think that, and, and that, thank you so much for saying that because that's, where my original intent for that answer was going, but but it is when the freelancers come in the morning on a Wednesday or a Thursday to do the centerpiece work, we can all just enjoy the experience straight off the bat. And there's not a question and answer period of how many of these can we use? How many of these can we use? And uh, it just makes the day much more, the production just so much easier. So, so much easier. It's really, it's really been great. And we've implemented that on a number of uh, our weddings last year and then events for this year. And again, um, our destination. So if anybody likes to do destination weddings, uh, this system makes it so easy for you to just land and get your flowers. And you know exactly, you're not spending hours at the calculator at night on a Tuesday going, okay, what are my centerpieces going to look like? Uh, there's just no question and answer time. Right. And nobody has time for that on a wedding week. Right, exactly. And although a lot of your weddings I think are very unique and obviously you put a lot of your heart and soul into each different design, um, having those fund like foundational things, like you said earlier, you know, basically based on your minimums, what an arch needs to cost and how many flowers, you know, you're going to put into a certain kind of style in general. So as newer designers start to build their businesses, um, having those recipes kind of built into your system, do you feel like you've gone back and looked at anything that you did in the past to kind of compare or just um, have you been using it just to kind of say, okay, this is a giant ceiling installation. I've never done anything exactly like this at this venue. I want to just kind of price it out and see where it's going to land. That's funny. You should bring that particular one up because I'm doing that later today. (laughs) (laughs) How did I know? (laughs) You just knew, you just knew, is it written somewhere? Do you see it? Or do you see like the bubble out of my head? Yes, the bubble, yes. The florist as, bubble. As she's talking to Luann, but she's also thinking about the wildflower <laughs> installation above the heads of, yeah. That's yes. right. So in July, we have to do a large hanging piece that I have not done anything like this particular piece yet. And I'm very excited about it, but I've never done it. And the client needs a number. What does it cost? And I'm like, that's a very good question. <laughs> right. Yes. Let me figure that out for you. Let me figure that out and get back to you on that. Yeah. Um, So, you know, it's really good for those new pieces. But what I think what I also came to mind when you were asking that was the fact that, you know, so many weddings have similar things that they need. So Mm -hmm. I can just have my template or duplicate so-and-so's wedding from the Hutton House or machine shop and I put in a different color palette and I put in some different descriptors for centerpieces or the installation. And my quoting proposal turnover time is a lot faster. 
That's well, great. A whole lot faster. Now, you know, original design ideas take a long time to get to, but as far as the number aspect goes, that goes a lot quicker with every stem because I can see, um, and now that you're doing candles, so I kind of added yeah. my candles in as if they were a, uh, a flower line right. item and my yes. wholesaler knew that on the printout. So it would just say tea lights or pillars or, you know, whatever. Right. So that's exciting yeah. that addition has happened or happening. Yes, it's going to launch next week. And I'm really excited about that because I think a lot of designers want to build in you know, their candles mm -hmm. and their containers and their hard goods and things. And, you know, so that way people will have the option to enter those items as elements in the recipe, which I think was kind of always our intention. And then when we started getting feedback from members, everybody was saying, yes, this is something that we would like. So I'm excited that it's going to be coming out and people are going to start being able to use it because it'll really give an even better picture of, yes. you know, everything that's involved in and then whoever's helping you with, you know, packing candles and processing things like that and getting all that gathered and packed and prepped, you know, those lists, you know, um, instead of putting like the vendor florist, you know, the, the wholesaler's name in your vendor slot, you can put supplies or the name of the rental company that you're renting that arch from and it'll have its own list. So I think it'll just continue to work, we wanted to make it as seamless as possible. So it'll continue to work the same way. It'll just yeah. be like a nice addition to it. So hopefully that'll be helpful for you, yeah. Yes, I'm excited to use that. Um, that all-inclusive aspect of materials is really, really appealing. It's really yeah. great. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, Ashley, is there anything else that you'd like to say to any of the newer designers who are just joining or people who are considering becoming a member of Every STEM? If you haven't tried it, you, you know, as a parent, you have to force your kids to say, if you, if you haven't tried that, how do you know if you like it or not? And so I just want to say to everybody, <laughs> if you haven't tried every stem, just try it, just try. And again, you have to put the work in, in order to add your flowers. But if that saves you the time in the future, to be able to do more design work or take on more jobs. I mean, conceivably, somebody could take on even more weddings for their business using every STEM. You know, we have a minimum number of events. And granted, your energy level is a uh, considerate. Maybe you need to add in an energy level line item. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Human factor. Me, yeah, human factor. Yeah, human factor. But we know that it saves, I know that it saves time. Mm -hmm. I know that it saves time straight off the bat. Um, it, I used to spend hours and hours and hours long handing all of this or mm -hmm. just putting it in different spreadsheets. Like there would be right. different spreadsheets that I'd have open, mm -hmm. counting my candles, counting centerpieces, different things. And uh, this is just all in one. That's so great. great. I'm glad that it's gone from several hours of, you know, kind of yeah, handwritten recipes down to, you know, your last wedding that you had was a, like a half an hour um, from start to finish, even including the email great. that you sent. So, yeah. you know, your time, you know, as, as business owners, you know, we all call ourselves florists and floral designers and we are, but we're also business owners. And as a business owner, taking a half an hour of your time, something that you used to take three hours or four hours to do, yeah. you can yep. do so many other things that are not more valuable because I think creating the recipes and designs for a wedding or an event that you're selling is very valuable. We've talked mm -hmm. about all the benefits of that and how it can really help you in the design element and the, and the creativity. But I think it's also valuable because you can be doing so many other things with your time, mm -hmm. you know, either growing your business, like you said, taking on other clients or enjoying other things in your life because we don't want our businesses to be our entire right. life either. Right. Exactly. Yeah. My children are teenagers and I want to be able to spend more time with them before they go off and do their own thing. But mm -hmm. also over the winter, I was able to have enough time to spend 
updating the website and also um, creating a Pinterest uh, presence for our business through a marketing person that I hired. So I That's had the fantastic. time and money um, because of every STEM, I had more money yeah. and I had more time. And now uh, I kept hearing throughout the years how Pinterest was such a valuable aspect um, to have a presence on. And I looked at a lot of data on that and decided that that was something that I was going to invest in. Mm -hmm. And for not a huge ton of, it was under a thousand, Mm -hmm. uh, that I spent easily to create that, uh, have that person create that presence for me. And she put so much out there on our Pinterest page. I, I was just really impressed. Anybody go on there and, and see what she did. She's really, really oh, I'm great. I'm going to go look at it after this call. I was so <laughs> I'm excited. I was so, happy. I was so happy. I'm like, oh my gosh, my work looks like that, you know, That's and wonderful. she did palettes and all sorts of things. So, uh, and I can already see that that has generated traffic to my website. So That's it's right. kind of a butterfly effect of using every stem as I have more time to spend with my family and do these things that are benefiting my business as well. That's amazing. I'm so happy to hear that, Ashley. And I'm so glad that Amy connected us originally. I know. Great. Thank you, Amy. That's wonderful. Yay. <laughs> and, um, I just really appreciate you taking the time to talk with me today. I'm so glad that it's made your year super profitable and that it's given you time to spend more time with your family too. So that's awesome. Thank you. And thank you for dedicating your time and energy on every STEM. It's just, it's been game changer. <laughs>